All right, so I got some interesting footage sent to me the other day and um, thought I should talk about it. This is the uh, Brinkerhoff Cat 5 race, and uh, we're picking up action with about 7Ks to go. Now, I'd usually dismiss Cat 5 races because they don't generally have any teamwork or any tactics to speak of, but um, I wanted to share this one because these guys are actually quite strong, and uh, they got like 90% of the way there to really executing their their pre-race plan. So who are these guys? Well, they're the uh, R-Cube team, and uh, Justin, he's their their protected sprinter, and he's the one with the camera on his bars right here. So, so I just wanted to keep this short, talk about a few things they did right, and a few things they did wrong that ended up costing them the win. If you're here for the crash, just uh, skip to the last 100 meters. All right, I'll start with a couple of things that these guys got right. They came in with a clear plan, uh, which was keep Justin fresh, Again, he's their protected sprinter, the guy with the camera, and um, his teammates were going to mark any late race attacks and just keep things fa uh, fast in general to uh, prevent said attacks. And for, for you guys just getting into racing and and uh, you're new to teamwork in this sport, step one is just to know each other's strengths and weaknesses on your team and come in with a general plan to uh, capitalize on your, on your team's strengths. On our team and pretty much every other P P12 team I've been on, uh, we share prize money to acknowledge the fact that, yeah, it's a team effort to uh, to win the race, and um, and that also incentivizes team tactics. So that's a good segue to the other thing they did right. They're in an awesome position here. I counted four teammates Justin has right up towards the front with just uh, about six Ks to go, which means they're actually in a position to execute their, their pre-race plan. And if they're all up towards the front at the end of this bike race, there doesn't seem to be a lack of fitness that's preventing them from from executing that plan. So I'll be a little picky here. Um, when I'm in this position and I'm surrounded by teammates up towards the front, the plan is to uh, deliver me as the sprinter to the line. I'll have um, like two of my teammates who are more, you know, pure time trial guys, pure breakaway guys to um, patrol the front, keep the pace high, mark attacks. And then I'll have uh, maybe one or two other guys right alongside me who are more, um, more sprinters, more lead out guys. And um, that way it kind of guarantees that I have a teammate or two next to me when it's super fast in the final few kilometers and uh, when it's most important. And uh, I'm not really sure why he's following this guy in the orange. He was in pretty much ideal position a little further back there. Yeah, see, he's, he's doing kind of an effort here. He was surrounded by teammates, and um, now he's a little bit too close to the front. He's not surrounded by teammates, and he's out of that sweet, spots, uh, sweet spot position that I've talked about in some of my other videos that's like, you know, 12th or 15th wheel. It's the uh, slingshot position where you can respond best to attacks. But um, anyway, yeah, I'm being a little picky. I think that's the ideal situation. These guys just just being organized with, you know, four or five riders up towards the front. In the final few kilometers of the race is, uh, is pretty impressive. All right, so this little attack goes a few hundred meters later. And um, this is why it, it's not a good idea to be too close to the front. Um, well, first of all, uh, his teammate just kind of watches it go. They got a little bit boxed in, but... But now check out, he has to do this like seven, 800 watt surge. And um, when you're up towards the front, you feel a lot of these little accelerations as attacks go and as people let gaps open up and that sort of thing. And as a sprinter, let me tell you, that's the last thing you want is to be doing these accelerations, which he wouldn't be feeling if he was back 12th or 15th wheel where he was before. It looks like he's uh, getting crowded a little bit on his left. Let's see how he handles it. He's really not letting his, uh, his teammates wheel go, which is awesome. You shouldn't. Um, but this is pretty cool. He's even talking a little smack to this guy. I don't know if you can pick it up in the audio, but uh, he's getting crowded and he has uh, he's holding his ground. I like this. Sign of a true sprinter. <laughs> All right. So a few hundred meters later and um, we see the first of a few mistakes. All right. So he's the protected sprinter. He's got a teammate on the left. He's got a teammate on the right. Super close call, by the way. And there's this attack going um, up the left hand side. As the protected sprinter, should he burn a match and chase it, or rely on his teammates and their pre-race plan? Yeah, the obvious answer is he should chill. Let his teammates either mark it, or let it go and then chase it back. But um, instead, he gets anxious, does this effort, and um, and even worse, he starts to chase his teammate with this uh, with this 900 watt surge. So uh, so this tells me that he's fit, he's strong, he's just. He's just a little bit too anxious. He should be sitting back, chilling, and saving his legs for the sprint. And now, with almost 3Ks left to go, 
his teammate is actually on the front. Now they're actually leading the race. And um, it's way too early. I mean, maybe if he had like four teammates all in front of him, this might work. But, but you know, there's a reason you see like in pro races, you see leadouts that have at this point still five, six guys on the front just because it's just too much for one rider to keep things fast enough to prevent other other guys from attacking. And sure enough, you know, his teammate's been at the front for far too long. He starts to fade, his speed starts to drop, and boom, there goes the counterattack. Which brings us to this next critical moment in the race. So his teammate on the left has just finished pulling for the last couple of K. He's exhausted, he's not going to do anything. But he's got another teammate who's kind of saving the day here on the right, chasing down this attack. So again, as the protected sprinter, what do you do? Well, of course, you sit back, chill, and uh, let your teammate cover this attack, force other people to chase. But instead, again, he blows his wad chasing down a teammate. Uh, this is just hard to watch. Inside of almost 1K to go, he's doing this sprint-like effort, which is especially bad because not only is he basically using up his sprint here with maybe 60 seconds left to go in the race, but he's also offering up a draft to the people behind him, basically his competition, chasing down his teammates. So none of this makes sense. And again, right here, he's um, he's doing this effort to chase this down. He should just let his teammate jump on that wheel, and then he should soft pedal, let them get a gap, and then he can jump on riders as they pass by. But they're in real trouble now because they're kind of letting this gap open up to this guy in front of them, and they're both tired because they've both kind of they've both done this effort to jump across, and now it's this gap is opening up and. It's going to be up to Justin here, their sprinter, to close this down. His teammate's looking back. They're in, they're in real trouble now. So they start to get swarmed here on the left, which is a result of, uh, of the pace slowing down after they both kind of stopped pedaling. And he had to do an effort there to get back up to speed. Again, you don't want to be doing accelerations. Consistency is efficiency, right guys? I've talked about this before. So not the best line I've ever seen. He, um, he lets a gap open, open up to this guy in the black and yellow kit and he's got to close that down immediately. So, so now we're at 200 meters. He's just got to launch, go right now. He's got to go immediately, less than 200 meters. It's now or never. He's getting passed by, oh man, he's getting passed by teammates on the left. This is kind of a disaster. And then, um, boom, rider down. So this just looks so much like a Cat 5 sprint to me. There's nobody in control. There's people all over the road. There's a crash. And then, and then look at this dude on the left. Takes his hand off, hands off the bars. This is like the Cat 5 salute. I don't know why people insist on doing this. It drives me crazy. It's like the most dangerous thing you can do. Um, anyway, leave you guys with a photo montage here of... Um, how that crash went down at the finish, and um, if you just skipped right to the end, here's the quick takeaway. Keep it in your pants, and don't chase your teammates. Thanks for watching, guys. See you at the next one.